two hybrid inverter systems with two completely different approaches at home backup. SolarEdge is best known for their optimizers and central inverters, while Canadian Solar is better known for their affordable residential solar panels. But a lot has changed for these two manufacturers as the residential market has expanded its renewable efforts from just capturing sunlight to storing it in home batteries. Uh, SolarEdge, as many of you know, has a long history with LG Chem for battery backup. But that changed with the acquisition of Kokoma back in 2018. Well, sort of. It took nearly four years for SolarEdge to finally launch their in-house SolarEdge branded battery dubbed Energy Bank. By contrast, Canadian Solar has actually been developing, installing, and servicing large-scale utility batteries throughout the world for about four or five years now. So for them, it was only a matter of time before they brought their technology to the home. In this week's video, I wanted to compare these two hybrid DC coupled solutions to help you see the value of one over the other. We'll be looking at such things as ease of design and installation, safety, power output, expandability, round trip efficiency, serviceability, and warranties. And of course, pricing. With that said, be sure to subscribe to our channel by using the link down in the description below. We have several battery videos lined up and I'll be comparing things like the Franklin WH, which was highly requested by you guys, to the Enphase battery. And I might be throwing in the Tesla in that video. So we got three AC coupled batteries to compare. Of course, if you're someone that lives in our area of Southern California and you're interested in going solar, be sure to request your hassle-free quote from us by using the link down in the description below. We make the process of going solar easy and affordable by offering you only the best products and giving you the best customer service we can. So let's start with the fundamentals and look at the equipment, as this is a pretty important thing to consider for how much space is needed for each system if you decided to go with SolarEdge Energy Bank or the Canadian Solar EP Cube. Now the EP Cube has a modular battery design that's stackable, and with the hybrid inverter actually built into the system at the very top. The minimum number of batteries you can connect to the 7.6 kilowatt inverter is three. This will give you roughly 9.9 .9 kilowatt hours of storage energy, with the maximum for the entire stack being six batteries at 19.9 .9 kilowatt hours of energy. The system is roughly 24 inches wide, nine inches deep, and will stand anywhere between four feet to six feet tall, depending on the number of batteries you get. This is a very compact battery and inverter configuration compared to many other products on the market. The EP Cube also has a 200 amp automatic transfer switch called the Smart Gateway, which is also compact and coming in roughly at a square, 24 inches by 24 inches, and it's roughly seven inches deep. When you compare this to the Solar Edge, which has recently rebranded some of their product names, so excuse me if I use the older names. I haven't really taken the time, and their website goes back and forth in some of the stuff for both of them, so I'm like, okay, are you guys using new names or not? I can't really tell. But their inverters can get a little confusing because they actually have six different energy hub inverters ranging from three kilowatts all the way up to 11.4 kilowatts, depending on the size of the solar you want to get. And unlike the EP Cube, the hybrid inverter is not integrated with the batteries, which has some pros and cons. Pro being you can install the inverter without a battery. So you could just get a solar system with the energy hub, have it ready for batteries in the future. You can't do that with the EP Cube. You gotta at least get those three batteries. The con, is it takes up more space, you, you know, because you, you have to have the battery and then you have to have the inverter, they're separate, it's more wall space. The dimensions of all the Solar Edge Energy Hub inverters are relatively the same at about 18 inches tall, 15 inches wide, and seven inches deep. Solar Edge's Energy Bank is a fairly large battery by comparison to the EP Cube, coming in at roughly 32 inches wide, 47 inches tall. Yeah, we're talking about four feet tall and it's 10 inches deep. And the last piece of the puzzle for the Solar Edge Home Backup Solution is 
of course, a 200 amp automatic transfer switch, which they call the backup interface. This unit is 21 inches tall, 14 inches wide, and is about nine inches deep. I would kind of consider this a pretty compact unit. I wanted to bring all the dimensions of all the equipment forward and let you know about them because space is an important factor that many homeowners tend to overlook, especially if you plan on getting more than one battery, which leads us to the safety of the equipment and their certifications as our first talking point. Now, as of this video, the EP Cube is UL9540. Actually, all batteries have to be UL9540 certified. But the EP Cube is also UL9540A certified, which is a very important extra certification because batteries with the UL9540 certification are actually have a higher safety rating than batteries without them. While the Solar Edge is UL9540 certified, they haven't received that UL9540A certification, at least as of this video. I know they've mentioned to me numerous times over the months that it's coming, but it's not out there. You go on their website, you click on the spec sheets, it's not there. This means that the Solar Edge Energy Bank has to be installed three feet apart from anything. So whether you have multiple batteries, each one has to be three feet apart. By contrast, the EP Cube, the batteries, the whole system, they can be 12 inches apart. Much more compact. I mean, you can put a lot on a wall. The EP Cube's batteries are lithium iron phosphate, or LFP. This battery chemistry, as I've mentioned in many of my videos, is my favorite as it's the safest and most reliable battery chemistry that really should only be used for residential homes. Solar Edge, by comparison, is using a more traditional lithium ion chemistry, NMC. This is a very popular battery chemistry. It's used by everybody for your cell phones, your laptops, your iPads. It's used by Tesla and all their vehicles and their power walls. A lot of people use NMC, and this is nickel oxide, magnesium dioxide, and cobalt oxide. But we have plenty more things to compare. So let's move on to the power output, expandability, and round trip efficiency. Remember, if you're interested in getting a quote for solar or battery backup, be sure to visit us online by using the link I've provided down in the description below. Like I had hinted at, the solar edge inverter comes in a range of power output from as little as three kilowatts all the way up to 11.4 kilowatts. The EP Cube, it only comes with one inverter. It's a 7.6 kilowatt inverter, and that's it. And you don't really get any other options. In my experience, working with Solar Edge in the past, the most common inverter we installed was the 7.6. We're going to be you know, using a fully stacked EP Cube, giving us 7.6 kilowatts AC power and 19.9 kilowatt hours of battery storage connecting it to a 10 kilowatt DC solar system using Canadian Solar's 400 watt all black modules. For Solar Edge, we'll be using the same solar modules in size, but connecting that to a 7600 Energy Hub inverter, that's 7.6 kilowatts, with two energy banks giving us 19.4 kilowatt hours of battery storage. So very, very similar. We, we got a pretty comparable system to compare. The EP Cube has a continuous power output on grid of 7.6 kilowatts at 31.6 amps. The Solar Edge has a continuous power output of 7.6 kilowatts as well, but at 32 amps. The EP Cube has a continuous power output off grid with solar of 7.6 kilowatts at 31.6 amps, but they have a surge of 22 kilovolt amps, so pretty significant, and I'll be talking more on that. The Solar Edge has a continuous power output off grid with solar of 7.6 kilowatts at 32 amps. Sadly, there's no surge data on the inverter. There's surge data on the batteries, nothing on the inverters. So, I don't know. The EP Cube has a continuous power output off grid with no solar of 7.6 kilowatts at 31.6 amps and a surge of 10 kVA, that's kilovolt amps. So this is a system at night, no solar power, only the battery. You still get a lot of surge capabilities there. The Solar Edge has a continuous power output off grid with no solar of 7.6 kilowatts. Again, this has two batteries. If you only did one energy bank, you would actually only get five kilowatts, 5,000 watts, and I think it's at 25 amps. So keep that in mind. Again, no surge data for the inverter on what it could surge to. I kind of, I kind of find that a little frustrating. 
The surge data is really important because it helps us as an installer and you know a designer or an engineer, anybody out there, ensure you can start a large load like, hey, the air conditioner maybe during a grid failure. I think it's weird that SolarEdge doesn't include any surge data on their inverter specification sheet compared to everyone else in the industry. Enphase includes that, Tesla includes that. EPQ, Canadian Solar includes that. Franklin W8, everybody includes that. Solar Edge, they don't. They have surge data on the battery, but that's not really helpful if we don't know what the inverter can surge to. Now, that leads us into the expandability of these systems. And to start at the automatic transfer switch. Yeah, you kind of have to start with that, that component because everything is built off of that. So whatever that can handle, that'll tell you what the whole system can do. And the EPQ, well, it's really simple. Compared to Solar Edge, it's, it's, there's, it's pretty simple to follow. You got a 200 amp smart gateway. You can have six fully stacked systems connected to it. That's it, simple. That's 45.6 kilowatts of AC power at 189.6 amps, offering a massive 119.4 kilowatt hours of battery storage. Yeah, this thing is no joke. I mean, if you wanted to just go like, screw the utility company, this would be a system to be able to do that. It's gonna cost you a lot of money. I, I mentioned the price in my end phase video that we compared it with. So go check that one out if you wanna know, but it's not for everybody if you go that large. Let's get back to Solar Edge. We can connect up to three Solar Edge Energy Hub inverters to their 200 amp backup interface and up to three energy bank batteries to each inverter. So that's nine batteries in total would be the max. This gives us 11.8 kilowatts of continuous power output at 96 amps and up to 87.3 kilowatt hours of battery storage. A little asterisk here, you can go with the bigger inverters. You have to upgrade some of the equipment in the backup interface to get, I think it'll, it'll allow for 63 amps for each input. And so you could do those three 11.4 kilowatt inverters. So you could get more. At the end of the day, the EP cube still offers more backup power, regardless of what inverter configuration you go with. But with all this power, you want to make sure you're capturing as much of it at the end of the day. That's, that's where the round trip efficiency of Solar Edge's technology kind of edges ahead of the Canadian Solar's EP cube. Is it a lot? Well, Solar Edge states they have a battery round trip efficiency of roughly 94.5% compared to EP cubes, 93.93%. This is a very marginal difference, but it's one nonetheless. Now, you're always going to have energy loss. That's just kind of how things work in the world. You know, energy is lost along the way. So in my opinion, anything that's close to or over 90% is a win. But what about the warranties? The EP cube beats Solar Edge for warranty on the battery but SolarEdge beats EP Cube for the warranty on the inverter and the automatic transfer switches. We're finally getting to the moment you've all been kind of waiting and maybe fast forwarding for, and that's stacking these up against each other for price. Like always, pricing provided in this quote is an estimate and is subject to change without notice. The best thing for you to do is to request a hassle-free quote from us by using the link down in the description below. With that said, the pricing shown for both systems is cash pricing, so, no financing. Additional costs may be applicable if you plan on financing a project. That's just the way the world works. And there's more costs involved. Starting off with the Canadian Solar EP Cube, which comes in at $55,874,000 before the 30% federal investment tax credit, which after factoring that gives us a net system price of $39,112. By comparison, that Solar Edge home battery backup system comes in at $58,673,000 before the 30% federal tax credit, which after taking that into account, gives us a net system cost of $41,071. So about a $2,000 difference at the net price level, not that bad. At the end of the day, I think these are both very good products. I think we can agree on that. I personally feel the EP cube does a better job at backup compared to Solar Edge. But, you know, I put the information out there for you to decide for yourself. You know, maybe you think Solar Edge is better. I don't know. If you think, if you agree, yeah, EP Cube, you know what, it probably is better. You think Solar Edge is better? Tell me. I want to know. Let's find out. 
while you're down there, leaving me a comment, you know, giving me some shit on why I, you think one's better than the other, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I, I really appreciate it. You know, we, we appreciate your feedback. Don't forget to request your hassle-free quote if you live in our area, Southern California. We really do make the process of going solar quick and easy. If you like the EP Cube and you live in a different state, you know, reach out anyways and, you know, we'll pass your information on over to Canadian Solar so that way they can try and find an installer in your area that wants to offer the product. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.